Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. We got some both interesting and awesome content to go over today. We're going to start off with Starship, of course. So uh, let me show you something. So while I was editing our last video on Friday, I was able to sneak in the fact that SpaceX was currently transporting Booster 7 from the construction yard down, or should I say, back down to the orbital launch site. This, of course, after it suffered some uh, damage to its downcomer after its previous cryo test just weeks ago. Well, obviously the issue was fixed, the problem was solved, because the day of the transport, they also lifted her up and placed her down on the orbital launch table. Check out the tubes. And just as we expected, given the road closures, SpaceX did perform a cryo test, a full cryo test with both tanks yesterday afternoon. No word yet exactly how it went, but at this moment, the booster is still resting on the stand, not in pieces. It doesn't look like, at least at the moment, that they're preparing to move it back to the construction yard. So maybe we can move on to further stress tests, cryo tests, maybe some static firing. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, over the weekend, the Raptor installation stand was moved closer to the launch table. I'm not sure where it is exactly at this moment, but uh, I'm kind of under the impression that SpaceX won't even be able to light all 33 Raptor 2 engines until the FAA approves it through their PEA that is supposed to release at the end of this month. And the word I'm hearing is the FAA is actually on schedule to release that information at the end of this month, but we'll see. At the making of this video, there is still possible road closures scheduled through the rest of this week. Meanwhile, the Mars rocket's better half, its upper half, is still up Highway 4 at the high bay where it was fully stacked on Sunday. At this time, SN24 is expected to be the Starship to go on the first orbital flight. We'll see if that holds. And this is a spacecraft that is equipped with a Pez dispenser slot for possible Starlink deployments. However, until the orbital launch draws closer and more information is revealed, I'm just going to remain under the impression that this is most likely for testing purposes only. Bloomberg reported last week that SpaceX president and COO Gwen Shotwell is now expecting to see Starship launch from Boca Chica as early as June or July of this year. During her Keystone presentation for an engineering conference, Shotwell said the colonization of Mars is, quote, inevitable. One more time. Inevitable! Things are inevitably going to change! God damn it, open your fucking ears. But Shotwell also said that because SpaceX is not an expert at surviving on Mars or providing that expertise to others, they expect to partner up with others like NASA on such ventures. Quote, we don't build houses, we don't build cars. Well, my boss builds cars, I guess, but I don't like camping. Space News recently reported why the U.S. government, specifically the National Reconnaissance Office, for the first time used a reused booster for their recent Enroll 85 mission that launched out of Vandenberg last month. It turns out just 12 months before the launch, the NRO approached SpaceX and told them that they needed to change the orbit for their super secret mission, which would require the Western Range at Vandenberg Space Force Base. So a compromise between the two parties was made with SpaceX saying, hey, if you reuse the booster that you used previously on Enroll 87, we won't charge you extra. So once again, me, an American taxpayer, just wants to say, thank you, SpaceX. We've had a lot of Starlink missions lately in a row, and that streak is going to continue because the next Falcon 9 launch currently scheduled for May 12th, that's this Thursday, is Starlink 413, and then eventually followed by yet another Starlink launch. The former out of Vandenberg and the latter out of the Cape. Since the Russia-Ukraine war started, SpaceX has been providing Ukraine with Starlink service by providing user terminals to its government. In fact, around 150,000 users per day in the region, which is crucial support for Ukraine's infrastructure in restoring the destroyed territories. Well, the head of the Russian space agency just sent a memo to the Russian media calling out Elon and SpaceX's support for Ukrainian Nazis fighting in the war. Quote, it turns out the internet terminals of Elon Musk's Starlink satellite company were delivered to the militants of the Nazi Azov Battalion and the Ukrainian Marines in Maripol by military helicopters. According to our information, the delivery of the Starlink equipment was carried out by the Pentagon. Elon Musk thus is involved in supplying the fascist forces in Ukraine with military communications equipment. And for this, Elon, you will be held accountable like an adult, no matter how much you'll play the fool. Elon responding, there are no angels in war. Everyone's just going to have to come to their own moral conclusions themselves on this one. But since this is my show, I'll give you mine. It's just absolutely sad that it's come to this, uh, to the point where Russia's not even going to participate in the International Space Station program anymore. And there is blame to be cast all around. Russia shouldn't have invaded Ukraine. Ukraine should not have teased joining forces with NATO, which Russia saw as a threat. Our own president and vice president should have kept their derpy mouths closed instead of publicly acknowledging that Ukraine was going to join NATO. When Russia started lining Ukraine's borders with military equipment, it was the wrong call for Biden to say, uh, we'll just wait to see how far in Putin goes before we make a decision on what we're going to do. That was weak, and Putin called your bluff. Weakness is also the reason why Putin took Crimea during Obama's administration. It's the same administration. But nothing during Trump's presidency. 
In fact, if you want to talk about showing strength, over 100 Russian mercenaries were killed in Syria by U.S. troops under Trump. And yes, despite what progressive fact checkers and liberal media lied to you just months ago at the start of this war, there are Nazis fighting for Ukraine. That is an undisputable fact and one that you have to come to terms with. Elon did and he doesn't really see a problem with it. But me, as a taxpayer who is funding this, I don't want to support these assholes. And you know, Putin said that the reason they invade Ukraine is because of the Nazis, but that's bullshit. Propaganda from Russia is nothing new, but make no mistake, Ukraine is full of it as well. In fact, after Russia, Ukraine is the most corrupt country in Europe. Remember Hunter Biden's business dealings with corrupt Ukrainian company Burisma under Joe Biden's presidency? You're just going to have to forgive me that I don't want to send billions of our tax dollars to Nazis fighting in a dirty war for a corrupt power, especially when we have our own problems at our southern border and major U.S. cities, which I think is consistent with my worldview. But what's not consistent is that you have in this community people saying just months ago that we're a world without borders, you know, defund the military industrial complex, and then Russia ignores these borders that supposedly don't exist, invades Ukraine, and now you have the, these people in the space community getting all up in arms about it, saying, no, we need to send more money over there to the industrial complex to fight Russia with war. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching, and thank you Locals members for supporting the show. Have a nominal work week, and until next time, Godspeed.